I've now arrived. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome to yourlocalnote.com. I'm RJ. We're going to be hanging with Adams Wilson tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, so also, we uh, stream 24-7. Uh, you can check out the best Philadelphia music. That's right. All our musicians that we play are from the Philadelphia area. Uh, check it out. There's some great and talented people that we play. And also, you can get uh, our app for free. Go to the respective stores. Type in YLN. Download it for free. And you can take yourlocalnote.com with you anywhere where uh, you are going. All right, uh, we're going to be talking with Adams Wilson in just a few minutes, but we're going to play one of their songs off their album, Prairie Fires. The song is called Hellbound, and this is yourlocalnote.com. I don't want to go to hell today But I pack my bags just in case Wanna be the worst and last mistake All good girls hope to make But every time I see your face I find a reason to quit my hell down days Too good years to waste Don't want to disappear Without a trace Baby, you could be my big mistake We'll leave a trail of misery In our way The song is called Hellbound from the album Prairie Fires, and the band is Adams Wilson, and this is yourlocalnote.com. I would say uh, we also had a first as the song was playing. We had a little politics we were talking <laughs> in between songs. Normally we don't do that, but it was quite interesting. But anyway, guys, welcome to yourlocalnote.com. Really appreciate you having uh, taking the time to join us. And if you could, introduce yourselves and what you do with the band. Okay. Uh, my name is Adam Zeberwine, and I am the singer slash lyricist, and I play a little bit of guitar. I am Matt Riley. I am the guitar player, and I help out a little bit with the songwriting. <laughs> I'm Annette Williams, and I'm the newest member. I sing and play mandolin, and uh, I try guitar. Hey, I can rock a tambourine like nobody's business, though. <laughs> Okay, rocking a tambourine. I like that. All right, uh, let's uh, let's talk about how the band got its name, Adams Wilson. So yeah. I assume Adams, you had something to do with it, a little bit of it. I, yeah, I actually, um, it's kind of a funny situation where I try to avoid using my name at all possible, if at all possible. So I was playing around as sort of a solo guy, right? Uh, and kind of was using my full name, Adams Everwine, right? Um, every venue I played completely butchered my last name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I decided uh, I was going to use my middle name which is wilson and uh is much easier to pronounce and spell okay so then uh when i started the 
actual band, uh, we went through a list of over 300 names. I still have the spreadsheet. Nice. To prove it. <laughs> yes. And uh, of course. I think my favorite of which was Billy Graham Crackers. And uh, I, I seem to remember Sinisterio. 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 Okay. Yeah. We adopted a couple names for like a week or two at a yeah. time. And then, then just be like, no, this is not working. working. Okay. Yeah. And any experience where you would get a name that you like and then you would Google it and then there would be like three or four other bands oh, already constantly. out there? Oh, constantly. Yeah. There, I mean, that was, that was part of it. It was like we'd have the list on uh, in the spreadsheet was the names that have already been used right it by some band on myspace at the time who had like five fans but it was still like you don't <laughs> want to risk it, it you know? yeah absolutely uh, i think we had one band had that issue they they started and uh they'd been going for a year and then all all of a sudden they got a cease and desist uh, order yeah. you know type of stuff so I, but they fought it and they were able to get through it but yeah That's i know true. that process so you you just settled on adams wilson yeah, it was kind of just by default. Yeah, we we were Sinisterio for I think like three weeks, and uh, and then we were um, uh, useful useful yesterday. Useful yesterday, yeah, that's right. And which is a line from the wedding singer where okay. he says, you know, it's information that would have been useful yesterday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But as you may have just noticed, I have an issue with saying that <laughs> phrase without it sounding like I'm a second grader with a lisp. So uh, we moved on from that, and it was kind of just like, look, we've already got some. Momentum, however small, under Adam Wilson, so we're just going to keep it. You're going to stay with that? Yeah. Okay, very yeah. nice. All right, then let's get to the song Hellbound. Uh, you write the lyrics. Yeah. What is the song about? Uh, it's, so it's about this kind of character uh, that I made up. I kind of take all of the things that make up my personality, and then I'm like, okay, what would the opposite of that be? Okay. So I'm introverted and, you know, sort of um, uh, not very social. Mm -hmm. And then this guy in this song is out there saying like he's going to grab life by the horns and... Uh, That's you something you would be very uncomfortable. No, doing. yeah, I take life from a recliner <laughs> for the most part. So yeah, he's out there, you know, trying to win women's hearts and uh, be so, a heartbreaker. So unlike a lot of songwriters then, because a lot of songwriters are, if I don't experience it, I can't write and sing about no. it. You can. You have to lie. Constantly, you're, so yeah. You're, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I totally. So you're more of a storyteller, though. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, and there are some people who like to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's it's a thing. This song and maybe one or two other songs on this album, like there's two or three out of the thirteen that are not confessional or honest or whatever. The rest of them are. Okay. So it's half and half. Not even okay. half and half. It's a. So you do take some exper life experience and put yeah, it down on, on paper. Yeah. If anything, is that, is that but is that difficult for you? Uh, no, well, yeah, kind of. Um, so this album is kind of a departure in that sense. Like there was always a few songs that had to do with that, but mm -hmm. then I would kind of alternate going back and forth between making stuff up and, you know, pulling stuff from my own life. Or it would be like composite, you know, okay. or it'd be like, it's a feeling that I had and I'm putting it into sure. a larger sure. story that I made up. So, uh, on this one, it was, I really, I was reading a lot of Brene Brown at the time. Okay. This, like, you know, she gave a Ted talk on vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of challenged me to really be honest with uh, what was going on in my life. So like most of this album is just sheer painful uh, transparency. Okay. Yeah. It, are you the type of writer though, and, and there are a lot of writers like this, we've experienced this, where they seem to write better when they're going through a tough time in their life than oh, totally. when things are good. Yeah, yeah. It's easier for you to write. Good is uh, a, a pretty good way to kill your writing streak. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, you, you need to be miserable to be, to write songs. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so do you, Matt, I mean... That's where we come in. We make them miserable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've been holding we, me we down do our for best, years. You, know, just, if you seem in a good mood. Yeah, it's like, okay, good, yeah, yeah, come on, no, guys, we'll got to get to work we'll here. take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> so the songwriting process, you take care of all the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, then the music part is that a uh, collaborative absolutely yeah yeah there's two other guys in the band with us uh ryan busby and uh brian scorbin so they uh participate in the songwriting like we in that like matt and i will usually write the skeleton of a song or we'll write a whole song but then we'll bring it to the band to kind of arrange it and you know lay out like the feel of it the vibe um and i think um matt and i like i said we do the bulk of that um and then it kind of just it takes on a different shape when we bring it to the band you know it might start out as like there's one song on the album called sidekick mm -hmm. where it started out as like this big in my mind it was this big like full band like i don't know pop rock opera whatever something like that and then now it's like a piano ballad and it's just piano and like a cello and voice and that's it we did that good of job on it arranging it <laughs> said, you know what? i don't need you guys at all 
Yeah. Very nice. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play the second song that we wanted to play for tonight, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about that, and I've got some more questions about uh, the song uh, writing and song making process and uh, also making of the album, too. So we'll talk all about that coming up next. The song is called Upside Down. We're hanging out with Adams Wilson, and the album is Prairie Fires on yourlocalnote.com. The song is called Upside Down. It's uh, The band is Adams Wilson, and the album is Prairie Fires. Uh, all right, Adams, you're the songwriter, or the lyricist, I should say. Let's talk about this song, Upside Down. Is yeah. this something that you personally went through, or is this an idea that you came across and was like, okay, I got this, and this is what I'm going to do with it? This was, uh, this, this was one of the songs that um, was part of a challenge from a couple of people that were just like, don't hide behind your lyrics. Uh, kind of be honest and you know come out with what's really happening. And and then there was a couple of other ultimatums in there, which was write a happy song. 
because that is not something I'm known for doing. Okay. Um, so it's all about a crush and, uh, you know, which I was the state I was in at the time. Okay. Um, and then, you know, kind of looking back on it, it takes a different shape now where it's like that temporary sort of fleeting feeling of a crush that goes away once you've realized, uh, you know, the realities of relationship. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, for better or worse, I'm right. not saying that's I know, bad. I understand. No, I understand what you're saying. No, but so. but that's you know, you're right. I yeah. mean, it, it it makes sense. Um, Matt, now I get the impression you've known Adams for a number of years. I lived in Boston until 2008. Uh, where in Boston? Uh, in Boston. I was in, in the Boston. city. Yeah, in the what, city. What, what part? Uh, Brighton. 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 Okay. Brighton, My yeah. wife lived in the North End. Oh, really? And I lived in Charlestown for a short period of time. I worked in Charlestown. Did you really? At the Schraff Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. lived right down the uh, road from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I used to go to the 99 and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I used yeah. to play Faneuil Hall. And okay. All yeah. Those places sure. And, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I've been there. Um, so when I moved back down here in 2008, I, you know, one of the first things I did was start looking for, for bands. Mm -hmm. So I put an ad on Craigslist and I, he, he responded and um, his. He was living at the time way out in the farmlands of Jersey. Okay. I remember driving to it, and I'm like, where is this place? I, I can't. I, this is way too far out here. And uh, But we got it, you know, and it, and it, and it clicked. And uh, I think you had just released My Best Guess. Yeah. Or you were just about to release My Best Guess that summer. Uh, that was in 2008. And, and, then, and was that a solo project? That, yeah. So the first two albums were kind of solo, and then... And, and, Matt was working with you on the solo project? No, no, it was all yeah. kind of me and the uh, session guys. And then yeah. after I finished that second album, I went and put together the band, and Matt was the first guy yeah. to stick around. Okay. Yeah, and um, and then we just it just it just stuck, you know. And uh, we we've written a bunch of stuff, and we this is what the third third release we've done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, and and you have no issue, and and you work obviously very well with the fact that he's got a certain way of, of with his lyrics. And yeah. and you you seem to have no issue with that. No, uh, he he's that that's his. You know, he yeah. is great at it. And for me, it's a torturous process writing to, lyrics to try to write lyrics. Yeah, there's been times where when when we were rehearsing down, you know, way away, I had about an hour drive, and we'd get a structure of a song down and mm -hmm. scratch lyrics from it. So I'd leave, drive an hour to get home, and he, I'd have an email from him saying, "Here are the lyrics," and I'm like. How'd you do that? Yeah, you know, like it's like an hour for me to get two words out on a piece, on a you know, on a piece of paper, and he's mm -hmm. got the whole lyrics out. You know, then he, you know, the little fine tuning and, and stuff. But you know, that, that it just works. All right, and then that you're new to the band. Mm -hmm. You've been with the band a couple of months now. Yeah, actually, I guess I joined around December. Yeah, and, and December. how and how did so, that come about? Well, uh, seven years after Matt placed a Craigslist ad, <laughs> I, I looked on Craigslist. Um, I, I've been in the Philly area a, a couple years, and uh, I came here with another band. And then when things kind of ran its course there, um, I was I wasn't going to jump back into a band again. I was going to kind of really decide do what I wanted to do. And I'm like, but I know I want to do something with like a folk feel, Americana feel to it. And then I'm like, well, I'll look on Craigslist. And then one of the first ads I stopped on were theirs, and I'm like. Okay, let's see how this goes, and it just really kind of fit. And in, yeah. and we've started. I, I write too, and so we've started to collaborate on uh, all writing together. And um, we've put a, a little bit of a pause on that while we're focusing on the CD release, which we're really right. excited about. Right. But um, but it, it it's nice whenever you meet someone where it does kind of kind of all click together, and you know how to work with each other and can appreciate each other's talents. How difficult is it for you to? sort of since you've been doing writing for your solo project and for the band now you're sort of having to share yeah for lack of a better word right is that something that's difficult for you or is that something that you find <laughs> that as a welcome relief because yeah. it takes pressure off of you I, th I think it's more the latter uh i really i mean because for a while there i was really prolific so i was just putting out a ton of stuff on a weekly basis and not all of it was good but it was just it was constant flow right and then that sort of just i felt like it kind of i don't want to say dried up but i just feel like i had done what i wanted to do mm -hmm. and i was just like okay now i want to try something else so it's almost like being a writer like anytime you can bring in a new instrument or something like that even if i can't play it it's still just like it gives it me a little bit something. of a creative spark so bringing in two people who have 
you know, their own ideas and well, they're pulling you in a different direction. It's like, well, I never thought about that before. Okay. That's, that's challenging. I love it. Absolutely. How how difficult, Annette, is it to, to learn with a new band now? I mean, that's got to be, you've got to sort of, because there are egos involved. Oh, yeah. Well, the, so, I mean, you got to sort of take baby steps course, as you go musicians, through. Of course, there's always egos involved. <laughs> um, but what the thing is, is that's kind of a... Uh, Kind of what it's all about. You always have to learn to adapt when you're working with other musicians. I've I, I've done lots of different genres. I've I've been doing music for decades. So for me, it's learning how to work with each other, and the fact that we do work well together mm-hmm. is kind of, is is a really nice you know relief. And and you know for me to come in at this point where the band's kind of reinventing itself a little bit, and we're taking a new direction genre wise, mm-hmm. um, it's just all kind of happening at a good time and at the right time. So so it's a good thing. So it's 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 a fun challenge you have. Absolutely, I th- I th- but it is a challenge. The, the the writing has not been as much of an issue as sharing vocal duties. Uh. So that was that was something that I really wanted to uh, that I wanted to do for years was ha- bring in another singer. Sure, because I do all of the singing. Okay, and so when I brought in Annette, because I was just I even surprised Matt. I was just like, hey, I'm gonna put up an ad on Craigslist for a singer, and he's like, you're gonna do what? I was like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> that came as a surprise to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah he he had mentioned it before. But he just went out and did it, and it was. I was like, wait, wait, oh yeah, right, right, okay. I mean, the the thing for me is that you know I don't. Um, my voice doesn't have a ton of stamina, so I can do a show, but then I'm dead the next day. Okay. So I wanted to be able to you know have a little bit more um, rest, so that I could do you know better, longer shows, you know more frequent shows. Uh, is that a changing your approach to writing uh, lyrics? Totally, it totally is. Yeah, I mean, and I think the biggest part is that um, just knowing to shut up. Is, is difficult because now I'm hearing Annette sing songs that I used to sing. Right. And it sounds awesome. I think she sings them better because uh-huh. her voice is more suited towards what we were going for. Okay. But it's just, I there's been many times when she's starting to sing a song and I'm at the mic, you know. <laughs> so like, oh, I'll just back away now. Okay. I'm sorry about that. That's, uh, that's well, that that's cool. So it, it, it it's adding... It's adding a lot to the band. It's a totally new dynamic, yeah. But as a person who has basically started as a solo artist, I mean, this has got to be uh, a uh, new venture for you, as far and especially since you consider yourself an introvert, yeah. uh, that you are now opening up and sharing. It's, it, I guess, it's 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 a good thing because now you're you're stretching, yeah, and you're uh, it's getting out of your comfort zone. That's the uh, phrase. Sometimes that's when you write the best music. That's uh, it's probably the best. <laughs> that's the best time you, any type of performance mm-hmm. when you get you can force yourself out of a comfort zone. Um, I took an improv class, oh, really? and <laughs> that was to take myself out of uh, my comfort zone, and it did. I, I was not <laughs> comfortable with that. I'm I'm good in front of the mic, and I can talk to people, but then when you have to really perform and, and be funny and entertaining and think really quickly yeah that's that's unbelievable it gave me a a new um appreciation for people who can do that because i was not very good at it but it was still (laughs) good to to do and and to just go go through that so getting out of your comfort zone is probably going to turn out to be a good thing for the band you just gave me an idea for the next album we're going to go take an improv class learn how to do yes, yes and, and then, you know, nice yeah okay i want cred- i want credit for that on the <laughs> yeah. Right here. i mean you've got it on I the video it. so yeah. i can't deny it okay uh let's go to song number three and when we come back we're going to talk about uh the process of making this album and also uh, where you guys are playing and where people can find your music okay the, the next song is called golden it's from the album prairie fires and the band is adams wilson on your local
This is your localnote.com. The song is called Golden. The band is Adams Wilson, and uh, we're talking about their album Prairie Fires. And uh, let's real quickly go to this song. Uh, Adams Golden, what is this about? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of the idea that you, when you think that happiness is like your entire, like you want to be happy all the time, right. every day, your entire right. life, that that's not realistic. Right. It's the small moments, it's the, the tiniest bit of, um, you know, sitting on a couch on a Sunday afternoon with somebody that you love. Right. That's a much smaller thing that you can And And the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. Because there are people who are looking to be happy all the time, and you're right, you you, you just can't. Right. And uh, you get beaten down by life, and then you 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 look in the mirror, and you're like, who's that person looking back at you? And it's like, you know, it's good stuff. I like that. All right. um, The album, uh, uh, Prairie Fires, this is your third album? Or is this this the first album as the band? Third with Adam. Second as the band. Bam. Third, technically, if you count an EP. Do you count EPs? Yeah, we'll count EPs. Okay, then that's sure. third as the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what was the other question? Shoot, I already the forgot. The fifth that you've done. The fifth right? yeah. overall, yeah. Okay, yeah. the fifth yeah. overall. Okay. So you have quite a bit of experience of, of uh, recording albums. Where did you record this album? This is recorded at GCR Audio in Buffalo, New York, which is owned by uh, Robbie Takak of the Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, He's okay. one of the singers and the bass player. Right, right. Yeah. Why did you choose that? We kind of found him through a connection that just we stumbled into it, uh-huh. um, and we kind of thought he would ignore every email we sent or phone call. And he didn't. And he didn't. And uh, I think he said something about being the best band he's ever worked with. I don't know. Something <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Memory sketchy. But, uh, yeah, so he uh, he allowed us to come up there, and he actually produced our EP. Nice. Um, Lies Worth Telling. And then we just, that experience was basically the high point of Matt and my life. Yeah, so, it was great. It was, it was a really cool experience. So I guess when we started talking about doing the, the record, Again, we started thinking about where we wanted to do it, and that was kind of the first choice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, and if you can go to Buffalo in the fall or in the late yeah. spring, you know, it's yeah, yeah, you, you you don't go you don't go there in January. <laughs> I, th- I yeah. think it was the next month that they got pummeled yeah. by six know, feet of snow yeah, in one day. So we kind of missed out on that. Yeah, um, my my brother lives in Rochester, so oh, yeah. uh, I'm yeah. very familiar. I went to school out in Western New York, so yeah, I'm very familiar with whiteouts and snow that starts in uh, September and ends in May. 
very yeah. familiar with that. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, I don't know how people do that. Uh, so anyway, we knew we had to go back there because it sounded so great. Uh, the, cool. The EP and it really worked out for the best. I think. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. And and is there anything now? I guess we can just this goes right into uh, what we were talking about before. Um, with you guys are now sort of changing your genre as far as what type of music you're playing. How is how are you doing that? When why have you decided to do that? I'd say we're focusing or refining our genre. Like we've kind of always had like a rock slash country sure. kind of thing. Okay. And then we're sort of now like with this album, we had a couple of people that were really close to the band say just like, look, the country stuff is what works. Okay. <laughs> Get rid of everything else and okay. just go country and see what happens. And so, you know, I think we went in that direction, but then because of you, like what really drives you, what really influences you, it, like bubbles its way to the top, no matter what you do. Okay. I think some of the rocks sort of still filtered through and sure. it ended up being Americana. I got so, like it. we shot at country and sort of skewed Americana instead. But I think, you know, so that means like more acoustic instruments like mandolin, um, you know, cello, upright bass, that kind of stuff. And then uh, just pedal sort of steel. pedal steel, pedal which steel. is all over this record. And it sounds amazing to me. Who who did the pedal steel? There's a gentleman by the name of Jim, Jim Whitford, Whitford oh, of Buffalo. Okay. And um, he, we used him on Lies Worth Telling in, in 2012 on one track. And then... We were like, yeah, we need them for this one, and we were going to use them just for a couple of things, if I yeah. remember correctly. And it was, and we just, we were like, we abused him. Yeah, we we were like, this, like, well, why don't you play on this one? All right, well, why don't you play on this one? And every everything he was doing was just, it was, it was beautiful. It, it really. How, it now, really what was. are you going to do when you do, when you play live? Well, some of the like <laughs> you haven't thought about that. <laughs> yeah. well, some, yeah. We've done a little rearrangement for yeah. for the live stuff, like some of the um, pedal steel solos i now do like a mandolin solo okay and so we've just sort of you know exchanged out the instruments a little you're bit. adapting yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah and that was another huge part of bringing annette in was like so she's adding in the songwriting component she's adding in the vocal component um and then she's also bringing in mandolin so that's just i mean again it's a huge dynamics shift for the band yeah okay very very cool and uh, so you exp then you've got a cd release part uh party coming up right yeah. mm -hmm. all right uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second so with that all ready to go do you have more songs ready to go for an, an album after that we're working, we're working on, on it, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah we had a few things that we were kicking around that we've kind of put put aside to get ready for this but there were a few things that we had um but we are playing a brand new song on saturday that no one's ever heard before we are playing a new song wrote. on saturday that it, right and we uh we sort of worked on the arrangement together and uh it's called Graveyard, so people can look forward to that one. All right, uh, since you are talking about a show this Saturday, let's talk about your shows coming up. Saturday, where are you playing? Playing at a place called St. Michael's Mutual Club in Gibbstown, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost like a hall. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not almost like one, it is one. It's a hall. But it has a But bar. there'll be a cash bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it was a cash bar. That's <laughs> always important. Come party with us. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> So we're, yeah, we're playing that from seven to nine p.m. on Saturday. Okay, um, and it's got you know it's got a stage, it's got free parking, and it's halfway between Philly and sort of our Salem County roots. Okay, so it's the perfect location for us. Excellent. Um, and you've got a CD party coming up. When is that? Well, that's, that's the CD. That is oh, that is yeah. that is this, yeah. this Saturday. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. A Saturday. Okay, that's a Saturday, okay. May 9th. May 9th, yeah. CD release party. Very good. Uh, then you've got a benefit coming up. Yeah, on the 17th, we're, we're actually in um, Atlantic City. We're doing the Elephants for Autism Music Festival. Oh, okay. So we're playing on um, Sunday the 17th. And I apologize, I'm reading this right off my phone. Um, I, we're no doing one could see you doing that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we're doing a 145 set. It's at the uh, the Boneyard Bar and Grill on Virginia Avenue in Atlantic City. So nice. There's going to okay. be a lot of good bands playing okay. there. So um, that, that should be a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, maybe. May 9th, the CD release party. May 17th, the benefit. Any other shows coming up uh, besides that's that? That's what we've got right now. We've yeah. been putting all of our energy into the Excellent. So. No, that, that's perfect. Fantastic. All right. And, of course, uh, on, on the screen right now, you can see where uh, the uh, websites are, but you might as well just real quickly where people can find your music. <laughs> right. Yeah, adamswilson.net is really the place to go. Um, and then facebook.com slash adamswilsonband. Um, Either one of those will get you anywhere you need to go. So Twitter? You guys doing Twitter? We're doing the Twitter uh, intermittently. We do, okay. yeah. I know that. We're doing Instagram that. Yeah, a little good. bit. Okay. All that stuff is on your website. Absolutely. We are streaming on Spotify. Yes. Nice. Absolutely. You can find the entire new album on Spotify. Actually, every song we've ever recorded yeah. is on there. So Excellent. Totally free. 
iTunes as well. Okay, very good. All right, finally, uh, In the Clouds, what is that song about? It's uh, it's another crush song. It's, uh, you know, you kind of just being totally out of your mind to the point where it almost feels like a high. So, uh, and, you know, uh, not wanting to come back down, realizing that you probably will, but choosing not to for at least a little while. All right, very good. Guys, thank you so much. And gals, I should say, but I was, you know, I was <laughs> doing guys in general. But thank you so much for coming in. It's thank been you a pleasure. for having us. Thank you very much. Enjoyed uh, t- talking with you. Uh, and again, we are streaming 24-7. Get, our, uh, get your free app uh, by just going to the respective stores, type in YLN, download it for free, and take your local note.com with you anywhere you want to go. All right, wrapping things up with the song In the Clouds from the album Prairie Fires. The band is Adams Wilson on your local note. Dot com. I've never felt so powerless compared to this while sitting next to you, holding your hand, and I, I almost put an end to this. It did not fit There's no ending without you I wonder where we're taking this Do we get our wish? Don't tell me if it's not true Just let me stay here and I I could not put an end to this would not be There's no ending without you My eyes in the clouds I'm trying not to look down My head is in the clouds and I forget There's too much we could lose Just let me stay here and I I hope that there's no end to this Never quit No other love would do It's my head is in the clouds I'm trying not to Yeah, what it's like